Hi, so today we're going to talk about uh, meshing in some vascular. Um, so we're going to start off here. Um, so we've done some segmentations. Here are our contours. Uh, and then we've built a model. Um, if you want to review um, some of the options for, um, for segmentations, for setting paths, uh, you can see previous tutorials. Um, so today we're going to look at meshes. So we've got this, uh, this demo model here. Uh, we've got a number of walls, we've got caps, um, and we're going to start by creating a mesh. So we'll click, uh, right click on meshes and hit create mesh. And so we'll pick our demo model. Um, we'll touch in, we'll leave that there. Um, and our mesh name, we're going to say uh, aorta here. So this is our standard SimVascular demo data. This can be, uh, this can be brought up. You can see it in the background here, if you wish. Um, so now we're going to double click on the mesh that we've just created. Uh, and that brings up our meshing tool. Um, so we're going to start off. Um, we're going to estimate our mesh size and see what we've got here. So our units here are millimeters. This, the global max edge, si uh, max edge size is estimated at 0.29 millimeters. So that, that's a little small, perhaps, for, the, for this model, but in my experience, the auto, um, the auto estimator usually gives you a good size. So we're going to turn off surface meshing to start, so we just won't click that. So we'll turn off all the, um, the options except for volume meshing, which we will leave on. Um, and so you can see we've got all these views. Here are our models and the different views, so on and so forth. Um, so we'll hit Run Mesher. Um, it'll warn us it will take a while, but if you have surface meshing turned off, uh, in practice, this tends to be quite quick. So I'm going to click yes, and I want to continue. And there we go. Despite the warning, it's actually really rather fast. Um, so this mesh, here are some statistics on what we've got. Uh, we've got 92,000 elements here. Um, so let's actually see what we have. So we'll bring up our 3D view, and just for visual clarity, we'll close our scan here. Um, and I'm going to hide the segmentation so they're not visible and hide the model. So now we have our newly created mesh. And so we're going to zoom in and see what we've got. So in the sort of main part of the aorta here, uh, we've got some nice triangles. Things are fairly regular. Everything's looking smooth. Zoom out here and let's see what we've got on our caps. Um, so if we look at the caps, we have this. And this has a feature that is not ideal, which is that we have all these triangles intersecting at a single point here. Um, so this is like, uh, you know, at the North Pole or the South Pole, your lines of longitude all hit a, uh, a central point. But this is not ideal when we later put things into a finite element simulation. So uh, we're going to decide that we're not happy with this, um, and we're going to add some surface meshing. Uh, note that if you've already dealt with the caps and got a good surface mesh at the caps in the modeling uh, tutorial, or the modeling uh, section of, uh, of building your, constructing your simulations and models, uh, this might already be good. But if we need to fix it now, we're going to go back to our advanced options and we're going to hit surface meshing. And now we're going to run this again. It will warn us again. This time will be a little slower. But this model is constructed pretty coarse, so it shouldn't be too slow. Um, now we're waiting for this to go. Well, I wasn't lying. There we go. OK, so now it's remesh things. Um, and because I've set the, the edge size has turned out to actually be pretty coarse here. Um, but we still have nice, regular looking, almost equilateral triangles at the edges here. Um, so this is all you need to do for the most basic meshing. Um, and if you wish to just move on with your models from them, then you can, you can proceed to the next steps. Um, if we want to change things, for example, if we think that this is too coarse, so if you expect a lot of flow features at the inlets and outlets, here we've only got about uh, half a dozen or so triangles across this phase. Uh, that might not be enough, so let's try turning it up. Uh, 0.15, so we'll turn this, turn this to approximately twice of what we had before. Um, so this is just going to give us a finer mesh, and we'll rerun both. Do you want to continue? Yes. All right, and hopefully this won't take too long. All 
No, oh, fingers crossed. It's working hard. All right, here we go. So if you notice our total number of elements has gone up by a lot, now we have 500,000 here. Um, we've got a finer mesh on the triangles. Um, so now we're gonna look at exporting the mesh. Um, so if we go over here, it's always a good idea to save your work. So we'll do that now. So if we go over here and right click on the mesh that we've just created, uh, we'll click, go down the menu here and click export mesh complete. And here, in terms of files, I've got my SimVascular project here, which always has the, the folders, images, meshes, models, so on and so forth. So I'm going to export to our meshes folder. And so now I'm going to close SimVascular and see what we've got. So here's our meshes folder. And if you notice, it's 1131. We've got this set of meshes here. It's called Aorta Mesh Complete. And so just to check what we've got here, um, let's open this in ParaView so we can drag and drop. And we'll notice a couple things. The first is that aorta.vtp is much smaller. It's 825 kilobytes. Um, aorta.vtu is much larger. So aorta.vtp is gonna be our surface mesh. So that's the outside of the domain. Um, and aorta.vtu is the entire volumetric mesh. So let's put it into ParaView and see what we've got. So we'll open the eye here and click apply. Uh, and we're gonna just make it a solid color. So here's our mesh, it looks the same, great. If we wanna see the triangles, we can change the surface with edges. Uh, a later tutorial or ParaView tutorials will cover visualization in more detail. Um, and another thing that we can do to check what's going on with our model is we can make a quick slice just to see what's going on here. So I'm gonna make a slice in the Z direction and hit apply. So if you zoom in on your slice here, you'll see that you've got a small circle. So indicating that you've got a surface mesh. And then we'll do the same thing with our volumetric mesh here. So I ordered out VTU, here's your whole thing. We're gonna hide our slice. Uh, we'll reset our view here. Um, we'll make that a solid color again. Hit apply. Similarly, we're going to slice it. Uh, and now we get a solid disk indicating that we, in fact, have a volumetric mesh. If you look in the directory, um, we've got similarly, we've got an exterior. Um, we've got the exterior, we've got the volumetric mesh, we've got walls combined. That's all your walls together. If you go into mesh surfaces, this has the individual caps as you created during the modeling time. So this has the wall of the aorta, the wall of the iliac, which we've combined. But if you take these two together, it's all of the walls. Uh, and then a separate mesh for all three caps. So that concludes the basic things that you might need to do um, for simple meshing and vascular Boundary layer meshing uh, will increase your resolution near the edge. That will be covered in a later tutorial. Similarly, there are a number of options for local size changes. If you want to add more refinement uh, in smaller featured vessels, regional refinement, so on and so forth. Uh, advanced flags, you really don't need to worry about this um, at the level of this tutorial, um, but you can change your, uh, your options here. Um, and so that's about it. Um, these basic options, surface meshing, global max edge size, and volume meshing are the things that you'll need to use on a regular basis. So that concludes our tutorial on basic meshing uh, in SimVascular.